I would like to ask you first, what is the broader message that the committee is putting out here in giving this award to these two people? The broader message is to highlight that the abuses that women suffer in wars and other conflicts is not only uh, individual atrocities, but that it is used systematically as a weapon. That's one message. The second message is that this weapon is unlawful. And the third message is that people do have to realize and listen to the stories how awful these acts are in fact. And this is also what can end war, that to visualize the suffering and the brutality of what goes on. And that it has to end and that impunity has to end, that such atrocity Will, atrocities will have to be investigated as war crimes and perpetrators brought to justice. And indeed both of these people have furthered those ends from different ends of the perspective. Definitely. They represent uh, different conflicts, different regions. Mukwege has for many years treated victims of atrocities but he has also been very vocal in Congo and internationally exactly by uh, saying justice is everyone's business and that really pinpoints it. Uh, and it's the business of the national state where the atrocities have taken place, but it's also the business of international community. And what is unique with Nadia Murad is that she has had the courage as a victim to speak up and tell the story of what actually happened to her. Because in most cases, the stigma of being a victim of such crimes is so strong that women feel they just cannot speak up and tell the world what happened. So one is the helper, the other is the victim, as you pointed out earlier. Ma'am, this is a year in which sexual violence in society via the Me Too movement has touched the Nobel Foundation as well. Are there parallels in any way between sexual violence as a weapon of war and sexual violence in society, the Me Too movement in this case? I would like to say that um, there is a fundamental difference between war crime and what Me Too addresses. Um, there is uh, violence in society at large, unfortunately. I'm a criminal lawyer, I know that very well. But in fairness, there's a fundamental difference between such violence and war crimes, you know, where people kill each other and shoot each other in a total lawless context. So I think one should not pull the parallel too far. But there is, of course, a parallel. Why are women always vulnerable in war? And why is this weapon mostly, not always, but mostly used against women? It has something to do with the role of women in the society before the conflict came there, before the war was a fact, that a woman is vulnerable in such a situation. Women are usually not high-level politicians, they usually do not lead armies, and uh, they are sometimes, but mostly not, soldiers. Um, so these, it's not totally isolated from problems in civil society, but I do think it's important to say that the significance of a war crime is actually different than the problems we have in civil society. Finally, another element of controversy and the Peace Prize we know is no stranger to controversy. Aung San Suu Kyi, she was awarded the prize in 1991. There have been calls to strip her of it, particularly this year. Is there a sense in which the committee has felt the need this year to play it a little safe? Trump was mooted as a possible winner, Kim Jong-un. These two very worthy winners are likely to be very uncontroversial. Was that deliberate in any way? I ask to be believed that we make our decision on the mandate we have in Alfred Nobel's will. 
sometimes our decisions are very controversial, sometimes they are not. But being not controversial does not reduce the importance of the price. Because I believe this is a very important price and it can address um, what is in fact going on in conflicts all over the world, including the Rohingya situation. Um, and um, highlight the suffering of these victims who otherwise have been anonymous uh, to the attention of the international community. I think this is also an example. The legal instrument was created first in 1998. It is an example of activities international in the international community to make the situation of women, politics and the business of all, also the international community. Ma'am, thank you for your time. Thank you.